Good evening and welcome to our meditations for Maundy Thursday. Later we will be sharing in an act of Holy Communion. But before we do that you might like to quieten your heart, to still your mind. You might like to do that by saying the Lord's Prayer or perhaps using the ancient Jesus Prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner, with each line said on a separate breath. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. In the course of their meal, having taken and blessed the bread, Jesus broke it and gave it to them. And then he said, Take, this is my body. Taking the chalice, he gave it to them, thanking God, and they all drank from it. And he said, This is my blood, God's new covenant, poured out for many people. I'll not be drinking wine again, until the new day when I drink it in the kingdom of God. Then they sang a hymn and went directly to Mount Olives. We have two candles in the table set for communion today because this is Holy Week. One candle is for Good Friday and one is for today, Maundy Thursday. And today we remember the last Passover meal that Jesus celebrated with his disciples. Our communion service derives from this meal. And so we are invited to come together virtually around this table as those who belong to the household of Christ. Brothers and sisters who in our baptised lives live out the death and resurrection of Jesus, the family of the reborn and the reconciled, who inhabit a universe of grace. Remembering the death and resurrection of the one who is our life and our meaning, we come first to die to all that is loveless and all that is death dealing in our lives. In John chapter 13, Jesus says, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This command is particularly significant because today is Maundy Thursday. The name comes from the Latin mandatum, the first word in the Latin rendering of John 13, 34, a new commandment, mandatum novum. This commandment was given by the Lord on the Thursday before his crucifixion. So Maundy Thursday is the Thursday of the commandment. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. By this all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Jesus also commanded us to love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind and all our strength. Let us just take a moment to think about how we have lived in the light of these commands and make our own prayers of confession in the quietness of our hearts. A moment to pray. Thank you. 
Lord has promised that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Jesus is our peace. He has reconciled those who were divided through his body on the cross. He came and preached peace to everyone far and near because it is through him that we all can come to the Father in one spirit. Amen. Amen. So, as those committed to the life of grace, we come now to hear the story of the first Lord's Supper. And our Holy Week meditations this year have been built around a practice that we have come to know as dwelling in the Word, which itself is based on the ancient practice of Lectio Divina or Divine Reading. Dwelling in the Word invites us to listen individually and collectively as we read the Word of God and consider where God is drawing our attention. And so as we come to hear the passage read for the first time, I invite you to simply take it in, just allow it to register in your mind. Luke 22, verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles and he said to them, I have wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it again until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks to God and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took a piece of bread gave thanks to God, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he gave them the cup after supper, saying, This cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, the one who betrays me is here at the table with me. The Son of Man will die as God has decided, but how terrible for that man who betrays him. And then they began to ask among themselves, which one of them it could be who was going to do this? And an argument broke out among the disciples as to which of them should be thought of as the greatest. Jesus said to them, The king of the pagans have power over their people, and the rulers claim the title friends of the people, but this is not the way it is with you. Rather, the greatest one among you must be like the youngest, and the leader must be like the servant. Who is greater, the one who sits down to eat, or the one who serves? The one who sits down, of course, for I am among you as one who serves. As you come to hear the passage read for a second time, I invite you to listen for a word or a phrase that shimmers or reverberates within you. What's the word or idea or question that attracts or touches or even disturbs you? Following the reading, there will be a short time for you to reflect upon this word or phrase. And if you would like to, you are invited to share it in the comments to the side of the video. We hear the passage read a second time. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles and he said to them, I wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will never eat it until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus took a cup, gave thanks to God and said, Take this and share it among yourselves. I tell you that from now on I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. 
In the same way, he gave them the cup after the supper, saying, This cup is God's new covenant sealed with my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, the one who betrays me is here at the table with me. The Son of Man will die as God has decided, but how terrible for that man who betrays him. And then they began to ask among themselves which one of them it could be who was going to do this. And an argument broke out among the disciples as to which one of them should be thought of as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings of the pagans have power over their people, and the rulers claim the title friends of the people, but this is not the way it is with you. Rather, the greatest one among you must be like the youngest, and the leader must be like the servant. Who is greater? The one who sits down to eat, or the one who serves? The one who sits down, of course, but I am among you as one who serves. A few moments to reflect on that passage. If you would like to, and if you are able, you're invited to share the thought or idea that stood out for you where God was drawing your attention in the comments for this video. So we come now to hear the passage read for a third time. During the third reading, you're invited to attend to the way this passage connects to the context of your life at this moment. You can either focus on the word or phrase you considered earlier, or a new word, a new phrase, a new idea. But the challenge is to consider how this connects with what you have seen and heard this day. How does it speak into what is happening in your home, in your community, in the world? Again, following the third reading, there will be a time for you to reflect on how the passage connects with you at this moment. When the hour came Jesus took his place at the table with the apostles and he said to them I've wanted so much to eat this Passover meal with you before I suffer for I tell you I will never eat it again until it is given its full meaning in the kingdom of God and then Jesus took a cup and gave thanks to God and said take this and share it among yourselves I tell you that from now on I will not drink this wine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took a piece of bread, gave thanks to God, broke it and gave it to them saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he gave them the cup after the supper saying, This cup is God's new covenant sealed with my blood, 
which is poured out for you. But look, the one who betrays me is here at the table with me. The Son of Man will die as God has decided, but how terrible for that man who betrays him. Then they began to ask among themselves, which one of them it could be who was going to do this? And an argument broke out among the disciples as to which one of them should be thought of as the greatest. And Jesus said to them, The kings of the pagans have power over their people, and the rulers claim the title friends of the people, but this is not the way it is with you. Rather, the greatest one among you must be like the youngest, and the leader must be like the servant. Who is greater, the one who sits down to eat, or the one who serves? Well, the one who sits down, of course. But I am among you as one who serves. A few moments to reflect on how that passage connects with your life today. If you would like to, and if you are able, you are invited to share your thoughts with others in the comment section on this video. Let's pray together and let's say the family prayer, the prayer Jesus taught his disciples as we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory for ever and ever amen and so we come now to share in communion together before jesus broke the bread before he poured the wine, he gave thanks to you, Lord God, King of the universe, giver of every good thing, of food and drink, of companionship and love, of all that gives us strength and delight. And like him, we bless you for your generosity. Breaking the bread, Jesus spoke about the destruction of his own body, the result of human cruelty indifference and envy, remembering his courage and integrity, his willingness to die for the grace he proclaimed. We bless you for our redemption, won at such cost. Sharing the bread and the wine, Jesus promises to be with us always. And so we acknowledge and delight in his presence with us now. We bless you for him for his spirit that binds us together in a new and hope-filled humanity. And we ask that you would fill us again, Lord, and empower us to live together in the peace and truth of the gospel. So Jesus took some bread and tore it to pieces. Then he lifted the cup and held it up. 
Take this bread, drink this wine, my body, my blood, my life broken for you and poured out for all. The servant heart shattered and dispersed amongst us. That life for the world, that living word, distributed around the universe, his strength, his honour, his energy and compassion, given, offered, laid bare for us, waiting for the taking, for the eating and drinking. Do this and remember me, he said. Celebrate my life, my death, my resurrection, the new agreement between the creator and his creation. Eat and drink, remember and remind one another. Take this bread, he said, drink this wine. And so I invite you to take and eat, to drink wherever you are as we are, strong and weak, clear-sighted and muddled, hungry and thirsty for answers, for solutions, for a way forward, for righteousness, in faith, hope and love. Take, eat and drink. And after they left the upper room, they went to walk and talk and pray in the Garden of Gethsemane when it was dark. We have two candles and we've shared in an act of communion this evening because this is Holy Week. One candle is for Good Friday and one is for today, Maundy Thursday. Today we remember the last Passover meal that Jesus celebrated with his disciples. Our communion service derives from this meal. And so just as we have come together, wherever and whenever we are, as we have come together as we are, so we go our separate ways into the night as we are, strong and weak, clear-sighted and muddled, hungry and thirsty for answers, for solutions, for a way forward for righteousness, in faith, hope and love. A final prayer. God our Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, was obedient to the end and drank the cup prepared for him. So may we who share his table watch with him through the night of suffering and be faithful. Amen. Thank you for joining with me for this meditation and act of communion this evening. And I pray that God will bless you. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit will bless you and keep you and all those you love tonight and in all your tomorrows. Amen.